My name is Amina Blackwood Meeks, and I'm coming to you from Kingston, Jamaica. I want to give a big salute to the organizers of this very important festival in which we get to look at what our similarities are, our journeys, our hopes and dreams through our literature and our orature. I'm going to be sharing with you three stories and I place those stories in the context of the underuse of our traditional storytelling forms in our plans for human and economic and sustainable development. Our stories in shape and form, in content and intention come to us from West Africa because that's where most of us came from. And when we were taken, the stories were already packed in our heads. And in the stories is this wonderful being called Anansi that is so difficult for so many of us to understand. Anansi is the deity of wit and wisdom from the Akan people of Ghana. And that's why he's always using his head, because we have to learn to use with head. So I'm going to be sharing three stories with you. The first two stories are Anansi stories, which I have crafted into my own. And the third story, when I get to that story, I'll tell you about that story. Okay. So there is a ritual by which we start our stories. The storyteller has to say something, and those who are listening have to say something else. And today, I'm going to say Crick, and you are going to say Crack. Are you ready? Crick, crack. And the first story is the wisdom calabash. Me go down a river, me go down a river, when me calabash. Me look in at the water, look in at the water, when me calabash. Me see one big sinting, me see one big sinting, when me The supreme God, Nyan Kopong, got up off his seat and walked to the edge of heaven and looked down. And he saw that human beings were lacking in one very important ingredient. They didn't appear to be too sensible. They were lacking in wisdom. They were running around, believing everything they heard from every quarters from which everything came. And the Supreme God said to himself, you know I can't allow this to happen. So, I am going to send wisdom down to earth. And he gathered up all the wisdom he thought we needed, some science, some technology, some engineering, some mathematics, some art, and a lot, a lot, a lot of stories. And he put them in a calabash. And he called the God of wit and wisdom, Kwa Kuanansi, he said, I want you to take this calabash of wisdom down to earth, and I want you to give it to my people to use to save the world. And Anansi took the calabash of wisdom, and he brought it down to earth, and he wanted to know where he could keep it, so that whenever someone needed some wisdom to save the world, he would give it to them. And Anansi decided, he would go to the river to think this through. So he went to the river to think about what would he do with the calabash of wisdom. Me go down a river, me go down a river, when me calabash. Me look in at the water, look in at the water, when me calabash. And Anansi received instructions that he should take the calabash of wisdom and put it in the most sacred tree he could find. And so Anansi went walking around the world. And he came to South Africa and he saw the Baobab. And Anansi thought there must
belongs to the other sacred trees in the world. And he walked and walked and walked and he went to Oaxaca in Mexico and he found the Tula tree, but Anansi wasn't satisfied. He walked and walked and walked until he came to Jamaica. And Nancy arrived in Jamaica in the mango season. Every mango was bearing. And Nancy hear how mango good for your immune system, especially in these times. And Nancy see black mango, hairy mango, stringy mango, jewelry mango, number 11, whole heap of mango. And Nancy thought, no, I want a tree that is more than just seasonal. He enjoy a few of the mangoes still, you know. And then he went walking some more until he came to the blue mango. And Anansi decided that he would put the calabash of wisdom in the topmost part of the blue mango tree. So he tied the calabash round in belly. And he began to climb up the tree. And as he was going up the tree, the calabash was making a rhythm on that tree. The rhythm of the song he heard by the river. Me go down a river, me go down a river. With me calabash. Me looking at the water, looking at the water. With me calabash. And the music was so sweet. It was heard far and wide, and people came to see how who are doing it. They looked, and they saw a Nancy with a calabash tied around his belly, climbing up the blue maho tree. A Nancy, is what that you have there? Is a cup? Is a saucer? Is some jewelry? Is what? A Nancy said, it's all of those things. And I brought it from Africa. The Supreme God says, I'm to put it here so you can have all the wisdom you want to save the world. Of course, at that moment, everybody had an idea of how he could carry the calabash of wisdom. Anansi, put it on your back. So Anansi came out of the tree and he tied the calabash onto his back. And up again, he's going up the blue maho tree. Me go down a river, me go down a river. Anansi, why you don't put the calabash on your shoulder? So Anansi came down from the tree and he put the calabash on his shoulder. Anansi, put it on your head. Anansi, put it in your elbow. Anansi, behind your knee. And Anansi got so confused, trying to please everybody, that the calabash fell and broke and the wisdom started to run out of it and everybody just stood around watching as if they didn't know what to do and out of the wilderness out of the bush came a man called plato and plato pick up some of what came out of that calabash and plato tasted it it was delicious. He took what he wanted and he went and he told his friend, Mr. Aristotle, who came and he took some. Mm, it was delicious. And they went and they told their friend, Mr. Hippocrates, and he came and he took some. Mm, it was delicious. And everybody came and took some. And the people for whom and Nancy was given this calabash of wisdom stood around watching while others took what belonged to them as if they didn't know that they had been given the job to save the world. And Anansi wants you to know that there is still something left from that calabash of wisdom that belongs to only you. So we go down a river, we go down a river with the calabash. And when you're looking at the water, looking at the water, with your calabash. No bother, draw back, no draw back, no draw back, no draw back, with your calabash. You have to dip in the water, dip in the water, with your calabash, and save the world. I said I'm calling all my warriors to the front line. Hope
you got your army and you're ready to shine as in the calling on us soldiers. I bet you didn't know that a Nancy was a songwriter. Oh yes. And a Nancy loved nothing more than to write songs for his sons, of whom there were six. And where are Nancy's from? You don't just have a name because you like the name. You get a name according to your purpose. And each child has a very special purpose. The first son had a purpose for seeing trouble anywhere in the world. So his name was Sea Trouble. And the second son had a gift for finding a way making a road to anywhere in the world. So his name was Road Builder. And the third boy had a very special gift for removing every flood anywhere. There was nothing he enjoyed more than drinking from the river in just one gulp. So his name was River Drinker. And the next boy, he had this very special gift for cutting the biggest fish wide open with just a little pen knife. So his name was Fish Cutter. And the next boy, this boy had a very special gift for throwing stones, which mean that he was a real Jamaican pygmy. And so they called him Stone Thrower. But the next child, nobody seemed to know his purpose, but he was nice and soft and round and chubby and comfortable like a cushion. And so they just called him Kusha. Now Anansi was a very good father. And Anansi knew that if you have so many children, you have to provide for them. They need all kinds of things, food and bus fare and health plan and nice clothes to wear. And so Nancy decided that he was going to set up a business so he could look after his children. But he was going to investigate what was the best business to set up. And so one day Nancy got up and he put on his royal robes. Mm of those beautiful colors of black and gold and green mm -hmm, that symbolized that he was the father of the nation. And on the day he was going out to investigate what kind of business to set up, he was in such a hurry that he forgot to stop at his family altar and ask for protection. And he rushed out the door. And the first boy saw that and went, mm -mm. I see trouble. There's going to be big trouble. But by that time, Anansi had left. One day became two. And two days became many nights. And many nights became a long, long time. And Anansi didn't return. And so one day, Mrs. Anansi called her children together and said, this is very strange. Your father always returns, but this time he's been gone and I, I don't know what. And just at that moment, just at that moment, see trouble, thought he heard his father's voice calling all my warriors to the front line. And he said to his brothers, I see father. He's in big trouble, I see, Father. And they said, where? And he said, follow me. And off they went, and they walked for one day, maybe two, for two days. That became a long, long time. Until they came to a mountain that was so high, they couldn't get around it. So wide, they couldn't get over it. And the second boy said, that's my job. I am the road builder. And he made a road through that mountain. And all his brothers came behind him. And they walked.
for one day, maybe two. They walked for a long, long time. And at the end of the road, the river been come down, the river been come down. It must have been raining somewhere because there was this great big river and we couldn't cross over. And the third boy said, but I'm here. You haven't forgotten about me. And river drinker stepped up and in one slurp that river was gone, but in the bed of the river, there was the biggest fish they had ever seen. And the fish had a big belly that looked rather strange. And the fourth boy said, I wonder what could be in the belly of this fish. And he took out his knife and with one clean cut, <gasps> he opened it and out plopped Anansi, <gasps> panting for breath. <gasps> wanting to breathe, <gasps> wanting some fresh air. <gasps> and they stepped aside to allow Anansi to breathe. Wrong mistake. Because while they were doing that, they heard the strangest sound up in the sky. And when they looked up, they saw a bird they hadn't seen before. A bird with red eyes, a long beak, and feathers that looked as if they were white and blue. And there was this red, white, and blue apparition coming out of the sky, his eyes fastened on Anansi's coat. And the boys thought, oh, he can have that. We make these coats all the time. But when the bird got down, he didn't want the coat that belonged to the father of the nation. He wanted the father of the nation. And he bypassed the coat and he picked up Anansi and he's flying away. And before he could get too far, that boy, that boy who had the gift for throwing stones, picked up a stone and hurled it. And he didn't miss. It connected that bird right in the middle of his forehead. And he opened his mouth to scream. Ah! And that Nancy is falling out of the sky where all the rocks are. Remember that boy? Cushan? Cushan discovered his purpose. Cushan rolled up in the softest ball you could ever see. And Cushan put himself right in the place Anansi was to land. And Anansi had a soft, safe landing. And they all went home and had a great celebration. They were so happy to have found their father. And at the end of the celebration, the father said, you know, I saw many businesses I could start. And I have decided the one that I want. But I did find something found a treasure and I want to give it to the boy who did the most to bring me back well. What a pasa pasa. A great debate and disagreement because each boy thought that he had done the most to bring his father back. And because they couldn't agree, and Nancy referred the problem to the council of elders. You see, there was a time when we listened to our elders when we valued their opinion. And the council met, and after three days, they gave Anansi their decision, and Anansi called his sons. I said, I call in all my warriors to the front line. Hope you got your army and you're ready to shine. I said, I call in all my warriors to the battle feed. I want to know if the blood inside your vein is real. He said, the council of elders told me that you, Sea Trouble, did a great job. Of course, Sea Trouble now thought that this gift would be his. But Anansi said, the council of elders also said that although you knew where to find me, if your brother couldn't build a road and road builder, 
got ready to receive the treasure. Uh-uh, said Anansi. The council of elders said that your brother who drank up that river, a river drinker stepped in, mm -mm, said Anansi. But the boy who could open the fish and fish cutter stepped up, mm -mm, said Anansi. That boy who threw the stone, mm -mm, that boy who rolled over and saved me from hurting myself. So you see, the council of elders said, your talent is of no use without your talent or your talent or your talent. So this thing that I have found, I'm going to hang it in the sky. In the day when you see it, I want you to call it the sun. At night, when you see it, I want you to call it the moon. But always when you see it, let it be a reminder that we're sisters and brothers. We need one another. There is nothing we cannot accomplish when we answer the call. And so I call in on my warriors to the front line. Hope you have your army and you're ready to shout because I call in all my soldiers to the battle. Be the one to know that the blood is on your name. Wherever African peoples find themselves, on the continent or in the diaspora, there are many stories about flying. And so I am indebted to Virginia Hamilton for having written her own story, The People Could Fly, which has inspired me to present to you today this version of it. In Jamaica, there are many stories about flying and many songs about flying. And so I am also indebted to the Rastafari community for the song which I'm going to be using in this story. Fly away home to Zion. Fly away. One bright morning, when your work is over, you must fly away home. Stop at a time. If you stop at a time in Africa, the people knew magic and could fly. They would lift first one foot and then the other just as easily as if you were stepping on a fence flap their great black wings against the dark blue sky and fly. But the people were captured. Did you know? They were taken in boats. Did you know that some of them forgot how to fly when they could no longer smell the sweet smells of Africa? but some there were who kept their power strong as rum in the burning sun, like old man Joe. And then there was Sarah, so tall and so beautiful, but so afraid. They say one day as she worked amidst the rum in the burning sun, the baby on her back started crying. Done me, baby, don't cry. Your mama gonna fountain. And the one who called himself overseer just said, You better stop that thing from crying. Done me, baby, don't cry. But that's no way to stop a hungry baby from crying. And the crying grew louder. And the one who called himself overseer went and got the one who called himself master, who got the one who called himself driver, who came with a whip. Shh! Across 
Sarah's back. <gasps> and the crying grew louder. <laughs> Shh! And the crying! And Sarah fell to the ground and the crying. They say when old man Joe had seen enough, he knelt beside Sarah and he whispered the magic word. One bright morning, when your work is over, you must fly away home. And she said, now, father? And he said, yes, daughter. And she rolled over and lifted first one foot and then the other just as easily as if you were climbing on a fence. And she was gone. They say the one who called himself driver said, ah, it's a trick of the light. And the one who called himself overseer said, Massa, Massa, I done, I done seen old man Joe do magic. And the one who called himself Massa, he made a note of old man Joe. They say the next day, first one young man, and then another, and then another fell in the sun amidst the room and the one who called himself overseer went and got the one who called himself master who got the one who called himself driver who came with a whip shik, first across the back of one young man stop and then the other stop and then the other stop they say when old man Joe had seen enough, he knelt down and whispered first in the ear of one young man and then the other and then the other, the magic word. One bright morning, when your work is over, you must fly away home. And they rolled over and lifted first one foot and then the other and then the other just as easily as if you were climbing on a fence and they were gone they say the one who called himself master just looked at old man joe and said seize him but old joe just threw his head back and let the magic they say the people who had forgotten how to fly gathered around to watch and they said, Old Man Joe, take us with you. But it was too late. They'd have to wait for a chance to run. Run. Daddy, run. Run. Nanny, run. Anakauna, run. Busha, run. If you hear the dogs barking, run. If you see the light, run. If you hear them calling out your name, run. If you want a taste of freedom, run. They say, old man Joe, never stop flying until he came to a place called freedom where he saw Sarah and the baby and one young man and then the other and then the other. They say the people who had forgotten how to fly would sit around at nights and tell stories. And their favorite stories were about freedom and flying. And their children told their children and their children told their children. And their children told me. And me? I guess I just told it to you. Never stop flying until you come to a place called freedom. And one bright morning when your work is over you will fly away home, fly away home to Zion, fly away home. One 
bright morning. When your work is over, you must fly.